Welcome to this Coding Freaks screencast about uh, MVVM. It's the first part of a series which I have planned. Um, I will cover in this part uh, only the basic stuff of MVVM using MVVM Lite as my framework. Um, and I will guide you through all the steps um, and um, in difference to other screencasts you may, you may find on the internet. Uh, I will try to show you um, in this part and in the following parts a solution which is cleanly designed. Um, I think it's cleanly designed, it's uh, lays in, in each opinion, I know. But um, I want to separate all those layers and uh, want to build up together with you a solution step by step uh, which works with MVVM. So which what I don't will uh, cover in this tutorial is, is are the basics of MVVM itself. So I mm, think that people who are watching this are understanding MVVM and um, I'm not covering this in uh, deep detail. Go to other resources like Wikipedia to inform you about that. Okay, I as you can see, I started up with um, an empty solution. For those of you who don't know how to create it, it's a uh, file new project and then it's under other uh, project types, Visual Studio and just blank solution. That's what I did. And by the way, all the stuff, you can see it here in this little icon. I will uh, share the complete uh, source code on GitHub and I will share the link on um, beneath my video too. Okay, so the first thing I do is I just generate solution folders for all those layers which I'm planning to implement. The first layer will be uh, clearly enough the UI layer itself and another layer uh, which will come into place later on is the logic layer. So you will see what this is and I have um, uh, something um, like a, you know, um, a standard um, in my project, I generate a shared folder too, dot shared, so it is on the top all the time. And uh, when I go to the file system, I generate all those folders, dot shared dot, to generate the shared folder, the logic folder, and the UI folder. I generate them in file system too. And first I do is I just add a file which I prepared. It's called sharedassemblyinfo.cs. This, by the way, has nothing to do with MVVM itself. It's just for showing a clean way for, the, for building solutions. So I copy this file, which is a text file with the ending CS, and I add it to my shared folder here. Existing item, because I already have it in shared, shared assembly info. And this is everything I uh, put inside of this file. So all this stuff which is um, unique to all um, projects, which I will create later on, and standing in each assembly info file, I put it in this file. And now when I add a new UI project, which is the next step, add new project, just select the WPF application and call it UI.desktop because in my uh, standard, is it is in the UI folder, so I call it UI dot and then desktop, and I put it in this folder and hit OK. So this generates me a simple, plain um, WPF application with a main window inside it. I close this, close all the stuff with a main window, with an app XAML, uh, stuff, stuff like that. And the first I will do is I would like to put the shared assembly info beside this assembly info. So what I do is I just hit add existing item, go back to my folder where it is shared and instead of just simple double clicking it, just add it as a link. And then I move it to the properties folder. I have to do it this way because you can't add it directly to properties folder. So now I go to assembly info and I just remove all the stuff which is which is already inside of the shared assembly info and just say mvvm sample 
which is the name of my solution, .ui.desktop, the desktop application. Okay, let's say the Windows desktop application. Okay, this is okay. Now I go to the properties and I am used to um, do something here. I just want to show you so that you can understand the code which is uh, on GitHub. So I call this default namespace coding freaks and block samples, which is the name of my GitHub repository and then the solution name dot folder name dot project name and here in the assembly name I say mvvm sample dot so that's it and now what I have to do is I have to take care of my namespaces which are right now not matching my default namespace so I go to the CS file and I I have resharper here on my side so I can use this little bulb and say hey move this so it puts me this stuff in the right namespace which I defined and and that's important for all those guys which don't have resharper and it corrects the same stuff in the XAML file too so that it's pointing to the right direction when I did this I do this in main window 2 move and then in the XAML of the main window it's moved to. So this is all preparation stuff but I think yeah it's okay. I think this is important when somebody talks to you about a uh, clean application design to um, hit points like that too. So just to prove that it's working I just do a rebuild on my UI and it's succeeded and it's okay. Now we want to come to MVVM itself. As I told you at the beginning, I will use MVVM Lite, uh, which is from GalaSoft and it's a guy, Laurent Bignon. He's behind this uh, project and he did a, a good job in just providing a simple, straightforward, easy to understand framework for implementing MVVM Lite. And another framework coming from Microsoft, for example, for MVVM is Prism. Uh, which is part of the building blocks of uh, Microsoft, but there's more wiring up stuff necessary to understand what's going on. That's why I decided to use MVVM Lite. How to get it? I simply go in the UI desktop to right click on references and go to manage NuGet packages. And I'm searching for MVVM Lite. So here, the first uh, hit is uh, the complete MVVM Lite package which has a lot of dependencies and um, this package uh, is necessary when you will implement MVVM Lite in the UI. Later on when, we'll, when we will come to logic we will see that this package MVVM Lite libs is an um, uh, important tool because it brings only the libraries without all the other stuff this package brings within. But this is the right for this moment, the right package. So we select MVVM Lite and hit install. And just wait a few seconds. Yeah, we accept. So as you can see, there are three references coming in um, into our project. A website welcomes us. Okay, I just close NuGet. There are three references coming in. Then a new folder is created containing two files. We will see them in a minute. And uh, there are there's a packages config, of course, because of NuGet. And there's something changed in AppSAML, which we will see in a minute. Just go into this new folder view model. View model is a folder containing first the view model locator. The view model locator, I just get rid of this stuff to get a good overview and just let's see we will cover all the stuff in later tutorials and I'm just using this expression body syntax of C sharp which is available right now and that's <coughs> let's get rid of the to do and that's how this file looks it's a simple file it's inheriting from nothing than but object and uh, it has a constructor which is using 
some magic stuff which we will explain in later tutorials um, it's for those guys who are impatient it's um, inversion of control control simple IOC which means there is something set up for providing dependency injection into um, this project but it's not uh, necessary to understand all the stuff which comes uh, in a minute. So I just leave this and what it's providing me, it's providing me an instance of main view model as a property um, called main. I can name it any other way. And it's coming from the service locator which, which says, hey, give me an instance of this, that's all. So when some point of code wants to get or to, to retrieve what's behind main, the service locator, which is something you don't know yet, is coming into place to get you an instance of main view model. It's like a factory for objects. So that's all in this class. Let's save it. The main view model itself, this is the main, th this is the view model. Let's get rid of this. This is a view model for our main window, which is this one which means in the MVVM thinking you should you shouldn't put any code in this code behind this is necessary for WPF but the, the main target is to not put any code into this file but instead put all the logic that you need into this file which is a different file so this I leave the file as it is and we will take a look into the app XAML the app XAML has a new entry inside a resource dictionary and I just clean it up a little bit because it's better re it's more readable then let's see every attribute okay so what's coming into place is that we have a new resource from type view model locator this type is located in a namespace um, labeled v VM this namespace points to this .NET namespace, which is simply our folder view model, because the view model, the main view model, and the view model locator are inside this folder, and thus, I'll just show you, they got this namespace suffix. Okay, so in this VM namespace, there is a type called view model locator, and what we are saying here is put into this dictionary put a variable of this type um, given the key locator and label it or um, no not label it but giving the property that uh, indicates that this is a data source so what is this data source D is data source comes from a namespace and you can see this namespace is uh, originally implemented for targeting blend and because this is uh, coming from Blend, the Studio wouldn't know what to do with this. So just let me remove this to show it to you and then try to build this project. <laughs> and it succeeds. Uh, um, so it, it shouldn't succeed normally. This, this little attribute is used to indicate that, oh, by the way, I removed the the wrong one. Now, remove this one, and now you get an error and saying that view model locator does not, not exist in the namespace, and the property is data source does not exist in the namespace blend. This is false. This is a uh, false negative, if you will. When I just add ignorable and say rebuild, everything is fine. So ignorable comes from this D1, P1 namespace d1p1 is from markup compatibility and it's saying that hey uh, xaml compiler please ignore everything which is coming from the d uh, namespace when you compile this and this is why i just mistake it uh, a little bit this is why this data source is not uh, checked on compilation time and that's good that it's not checked that is the magic behind this stuff you see i mess it a uh, little bit for myself because you don't need to know this all the all the time it's just important to know that you can't remove this one okay so now we have locator in place and we take a look at the main window and we will see 
nothing changed here so far. So what we can um, do or investigate now. So when I start this, everything is normal as it was. And uh, to, to show you that nothing changed yet, I just go to this view model locator and take in or add a breakpoint at this position and it shouldn't be hit. So as you can see, the application starts and this breakpoint is never reached. That is because, in fact, we just wired up everything, in s but we missed to wire up the main view with its view model. Meaning that no one uses this view model locator right now, and so, so the view model locator isn't used um, at all. It's not instantiated by anyone. So what we will do now is we have to add a so-called binding between the main view, the main window in this case, and its view model. Normally, you would add a binding the following way. You go to the window and you have to know that there is something called data context. Oh, I can search. That's a bug of Visual Studio, by the way, sometimes. You scroll and or something and then you can enter and when you're typing, nothing happens. So you have to know where this data context is. And I know where it is. Here it is, data context. And you go to create data binding and you see nothing. That is, that is because Visual Studio and this window don't recognize our app XAML and the resource dictionary uh, right now as a valid source for bindings. That's sad because it's an, you know, it's an obstacle for all those guys which are new to um, MVVM or WPF binding, stuff like that. Um, you have to know that you have to bind the data context property against the view model so that MVVM uh, will work. So you have to do it in XAML. So when you know that there is something called data context, which um, says on the control, like window, hey, where do I receive my data from? You, uh, please don't mess up this property data context with another property uh, which comes into list controls like list or grid, which is called item source. It's not the same. The data context is the context which um, um, provides C sharp objects, if you will, to controls. So when you will uh, bind something, you have to say, no, it's not simple something. It's a binding, so you have to do those curly braces. Let me just um, zoom in a little bit. So with those curly braces, you tell WPF, hey, uh, listen, this one, which I, this term which I give you, you have to um, do something at runtime to obtain the value which is behind it. So what I do is I say binding, it is a binding against a property called main. Why I'm using main? Because the property in the view model locator is called main. And now I have to tell him that the source of this property is not, is not something, but it is a static result, resource called locator. And here IntelliSense uh, come in comes into place because it's searching for all static resources he finds. So what is a static resource? In AppSAML, we define uh, a resource dictionary, and because it's defined at application resources, it's available as a static resource to all other partic participants in this assembly. Um, and thus, it's available through static resource binding. You see, it's a binding inside a binding. By the way, this is the most complicated part in this complete tutorial. And if you understand bindings, you will understand this one. And understanding bindings is um, the minimum for you to start up with WPF. So if you don't know what's going on here, you have to, uh, to learn something about bindings. OK, now that we are bound this, uh, let's go back and hit our breakpoint or add our breakpoint again. And just for recapitulation, 
I just added this line, did nothing more. And now just start the app and what happens, you're hitting this breakpoint. You're hitting it because the main window says, hey, dear locator, I need what's inside your main property to be bound, again my bound against my data context. So locator is here and at the moment, the, the first um, hit on locator is reached, the app XAML will, if you, if you will, will generate an instance of view model locator. That's why we are hitting this breakpoint right now and we can execute it and nothing changed more. Okay, so what can we do now to just um, uh, prove that we are using MVVM? Well, we can go to main view model and now we can just add a property, let's say of type string, let's call it window title and let's make it immutable. And now we can use this source code and we can understand it. So what's going on? The main view model inher um, inherits from view model base, which comes from MVVM Lite. And view model base gives us a property which is called is in design mode, which will return true if the window is in this state, meaning it's opened in Visual Studio or Blend. And it would, will return false if we hit a five. So we will come in this um, area. And um, that's why we can do something like this. And we know this window title equals MVV M sample design and here we can say MVVM sample without design. So we did this and now we go back to the main window and simply first of all build our application. That's an important part when you're dealing with MVVM and when we build it we click on the window going uh, to the title property, which is here in the common area, title, using the binding. And if you experience this, this is normal the first time. Just let me restart my studio. <laughs> you know, Microsoft uh, doesn't get rid of restarting studio. <coughs> so, or restarting something. Restarting is always a good thing. You don't have to do the restart all the time, just um, the first time when you implemented MVVM Lite, it might be necessary to do this. So bring us back to the designer. Click on main window again. Maybe we are happy and can type title, see, title search. Now we can go create data binding and voila, he's recognizing that there is a data context, see, binding type on data context of the window. And this data context provides three properties, which those two come from the view model base. And this is our window title property. And if we bind against it, you see that immediately here on the top, it's changing the title because this title is bound against a property of this main view model. Now, this mode one way, by the, um, by the way, <laughs> indicates that um, only changes from the view model to the view will be um, uh, transported, not changes from the view back to the view model. So that's why. Now, when we start this application, we can see that, oh yeah, our breakpoint is hit. Very good. Let's see, here is my designer. You see in the designer, he's using this title and now he's using this title in the runtime. That's exactly what we wanted to achieve. So the, the good news is we have a couple of logic which knows something about the view but doesn't know the view itself. It knows that the view is in design mode or is not in design mode 
And depending on this information, it's doing something which directly does something on the view because of the bindings. That's exactly what you wanted to achieve and what you couldn't achieve with technologies like um, uh, Windows Forms because Windows Forms has no option um, uh, which is equivalent to binding. There is no technique like binding in uh, Windows Forms and that's why it's not working with MVVM. So we are almost done. The only thing is this empty logic layer. What is this for? So I'll show you. First of all, I create a new project from type class library in the logic folder, which is empty, and call it logic.ui. So this will, this will hold all my UI logic. Okay, now I get rid of class one, I don't need it. And I'm just, first of all, copying my shared assembly info into this properties, removing all the stuff and doing what I want to do. MVVLite.logic, uh, the logic components for the desktop UI, for, for example. So now I go to properties and copy all the stuff from my other properties so that my namespaces are in the right schema. That's how I do it. And now I add a reference to UI desktop uh, or in UI desktop to logic UI so that UI desktop can use types from this. And now what I do is I go to logic UI and I will install the NuGet package MVVM Lite libs into it. So to show you another way for installing something, uh, I will use the console now, the NuGet uh, package manager console. And now I'm going to use install minus package MVVM Lite. Now I hit the tab key. It's searching on NuGet and I get this nice list. I use this one and I say, hey, do it in the project logic tab UI. Then hit enter. And he's installing this NuGet package into logic UI, which brings the three same references like in UI desktop, but nothing from view model or something like that. There's no other stuff coming in. That's exactly what I wanted. And now, as this project is prepared, I just take those two files and I move them with shift, um, keep the shift uh, key pressed to this project, and removing this folder in my UI desktop. Now I go to my two classes and correct the namespaces. the same in view model locator. If you don't have resharper like me, you have to do it manually. So I save those two files and I just, first of all, uh, I try to build this logic UI, only this project and it succeeds. So this is working. And now the last thing is I have to, um, do something because now view model locator is in a different assembly here and AppSaml doesn't know where to get it from and ReSharper is helping me again so you don't have to watch me typing and I just call it UI logic just saying that now I'm importing an XAML namespace or an XML namespace uh, calling it UI logic and it's coming from the CLR assembly uh, or CLR namespace coding freaks block samples MVVM samples logic UI which is inside the assembly another assembly not mine MVVM sample logic UI which is this one and now I can use the view model locator from this assembly and everything should work exactly the same way when I hit start 
I have the same behavior. And when I go to the main window designer, it's not working. Just a second, it's a rebuild issue, I think. Should work. Oh, it's not working right now. I don't know why, but it will work when I <laughs> restart my studio again. Um, trust me, it's working. Um, that is something, by the way, that it's typical to um, MVVM development. This binding at design time is not working every time um, the correct way. Um, I don't know exactly why, I suppose because this is nothing than an emulator of a real window and it's not working correctly. Um, sometimes it works, then it won't work. You don't know the reason, it's just, um, it's, it's, it's causing a lot of nerve. Let's say it this way. They should uh, improve this. So, what we have now is, we have separated um, our MVVM logic from our MVVM representation, which is a good idea, I think. We have binaries. Let's uh, see, you, you see this stuff and this stuff. You see this is empty because it's in shared assembly info, so no. Let's take a look at in the folder, in the bin folder, to show you what I mean. Y you have all this stuff and here is our executable and it has exactly the right properties because here is coding freaks, here is um, the version, everything is there. So I have a central point with shared assembly info to say something like this. This is uh, the beginner way of changing the version. So let's rebuild our app and just see. You see? This is exactly working and I have a central point for with shared assembly info for changing my uh, information. So that is clean too. And now I have a good starting point for my next tutorial, which will cover things like uh, routed commands and I notify property changed and uh, observable collection, which are important uh, pieces. When they stuck together, they will bring us a lot of um, nice behavior in our UI and uh, let's see. Bye.